Hi and welcome to Tech Talks, the People and Planet podcast. On this episode, I'm joined by Mark Chung, the co-founder and CEO of Internet of Things business, The Digris. Hi, Mark. How are you? Thanks for joining us. Hi, Lee. Thanks. So really interested to learn more about um, your business and in terms of the smart building aspect of it that you guys are, are really into. Um, so for the benefit of our, our listeners at home, um, talk us through the problem that you guys are solving with the mission, the inspiration, um, maybe start from the beginning. Sure, sure. I think, um, well, at the heart of Vertigris, the mission of Vertigris is to sustain and enrich uh, human life through responsive energy intelligence. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, one of the things that I learned through watching a, a movie called An Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore is an American film, but um, they talked about how man-made climate change is contributing to the collapse of the ecosystem. Um, as I started to dig into this issue, I learned about electricity as like kind of one of the primary um, energy uh, expenditures that the company that the that the sorry the world uses. And as I started to dig further in it, you know, 40, 50 percent of our electricity usage is actually con in the built environment. And beyond that, most of that is actually wasted energy. It's 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 energy that's going to nothing to like transformers and in heating and cooling the same space and all sorts of problems. So we were not using energy very efficiently. And I started to ask, why would people not do this automatically or not know? And it's it has to do with a gap of information and knowledge. And I think that's what Vertigris in its essence is trying to do is fill that gap with energy intelligence. And so what we've done over the last 10 years is we've sort of innovated a type of sensor that is completely connected to the cloud. It's an IoT sensor, obviously, but connected completely to the cloud. And we want to provide a level of granularity, real-time data, and visibility for people to understand the electricity of their buildings. And you know, today, I think there's a unique position that Vertigris sits in where we do this for very large Fortune 100 companies yeah. that have massive real estate footprints, and we deploy them and manage their networks of sensors for them. Wow, fantastic. What was that stat again? Did you say that it was 30 or 40 percent of, of wastage? Is, is yeah, in building, 40 percent in, in buildings, in yes. Environment. Wow, that's huge, isn't it? Yes. It really is huge. So so, so talk us through the, the actual product itself then. So it's a sensor, um, there's some artificial intelligence that's driving it. That's right, isn't it? That's right. So there's a couple of things. Um, you know, the, the way that the entire system, it starts with architecting everything in the cloud because uh, one of the great innovations of the internet is that when things are connected, you can do really powerful things with them. So um, we have an energy intelligence in the cloud, and that energy intelligence in the cloud is fed by a network of these sensors. They're so small little clip-in devices. So oh, they, wow. they kind of snap fit, they connect to each other, they go into a small device that looks yeah. a lot like an, uh, a, a kind of enlarged iPhone. Okay. But that device is basically dialing up to the cloud and connecting the electrical data up to the cloud. And then we run all of our software applications on top of a platform. We can manage that network with device management and, and trend and analyze different sensor topologies, provide, provide a variable, like a variety of all these different kind of uh, uh, electrical characteristics for the building. Interesting. So, and then um, do you guys send like some sort of a report back to, to the client to say, this is how much you're using stroke wasting yeah i mean we can so that's one of the applications so we do have we kind of have two different distinct products we have a um uh, I, I don't know if they're distinct but we have a platform which is this sensor and everything up into the cloud that sits as an api and yeah. this platform can be used by very large companies like t-mobile to power all of their data centers and networks and they can connect into the business intelligence software so they can generate all sorts of real-time energy uh, information into decisions that they have to make around network traffic um, around energy procurement all sorts of things um, but separately we do have applications that sit on that that are really geared toward the operator of a facility and that and in, in that lens we do provide reports we do provide automation we provide a number of different kinds of um, capabilities on top of that that platform really interesting so, so you guys are as you said before at the start um 10 years old 
Um, <laughs> and look, it's, it's, it's longer than a lot of businesses that we speak to that come onto this show. So I think our listeners would be interested to understand a little bit more about that journey. You know, the challenges, of course, there's, there's a lot of challenges that's happening in the world in, in the 10 years. But what in particular about you guys and how have you navigated those? Yeah, I think our long our journey has been a little bit longer than most. I think that's for a variety of reasons. Um, one of those is because um, unlike many businesses um, that start off, and I don't advise this to your listeners, but unlike many businesses that start off really with a concrete problem and um, can solve that concrete problem, they bring technology to that problem. Uh, my, my co-founders and I um, came from you know, we're in Silicon Valley, we're technologists, we're both, we're all engineers. And we started off kind of developing these really novel uh, machine learning algorithms on top of signals like, you know, electricity signals, um, IP packet signals, all sorts of things. So this kind of the genesis of the company was really interesting technology capabilities that we said, hey, these have broad applications. Um, so from an R&D perspective, hardening that into a capability and then turning that capability into a solution to a specific discrete problem just took a lot longer going in this sure. direction than in the other direction and um so a variety of reasons that it that took us a long time i think it's also introduced a lot of um challenges also uh just being um a venture-backed company it's not it's not easy to back a venture company that's just a technology uh, doesn't actually have a real business or a business problem that it's solving so you know the first first phase of the company it was quite easy for us to raise capital because of the reputation of the founders and the work that we had done previously and and some really notable exits uh, but increasingly as we were just building cool technology it, it got harder and harder and harder so um, that's a lesson that I would probably want to share with your your, your um, yeah, audience. I think, I think yeah. that's a great takeaway, isn't it? Because I, I, when we spoke the, the, the first time, you know, I said to you, it's, it's, it's a unique proposition because most people come on with a very definite problem that they are solving. Yeah. Um, and you have, you know, did you, when you first built the technology, did you then think, ah, I know this is going to go onto the side of buildings and we're going to do this. Or was there other applications for that as well, which you thought perhaps it could use? Well, yeah, I mean, it, you know, the interesting thing is that it was kind of a problem that we were trying to solve when we developed the technology. So the um, I didn't share this as a story, but when I discovered first the application of this capability, it was really because I come home from a vacation um, you know, spending some time in Austin, I came back and I got a utility bill and that my utility bill was on my house and I'd just been a, a recent homeowner at that time. It was in 2007. And I saw my utility bill spike from 60 bucks to about $600. So almost a 10 X increase. And I couldn't figure out exactly where that was coming from. And, you know, over a period of, of months, trust trying to figure out why this was happening. I got a repeat bill that was the same like same quantity it was like so expensive and um i started to just rack my brain on how can i figure out where this electricity is going and finally it dawned on me that if we were just capturing a signal at a very high frequency at the outside of my building and outside of my house i could figure out where this was but when we did this we discovered some really interesting things about the electricity signal and pattern and that really inspired the work behind this um, technology that we developed um, so then kind of fast forward, I um, I started to we started to explore the market and said, hey, we could build a residential product that could uh, basically produce like an itemized cell phone bill type thing for everybody's utility and we could just show it to everyone. And when we did that, like, you know, this was back in 2011, nobody cared. There was no no one that said, hey, this is cool. Let me sign up for this. Let me let me spend several hundred dollars to do this. Like, it doesn't make any sense for most people to do that. Um, they were just kind of like, well, oh, it's it's a nice to have. It's not a need to have. Yeah. And so yeah. then began a search for actually people who might have a, a, an acute financial incentive to solve this problem. Yeah, very, very cool. And, and you know, uh, a good proportion of our listener base uh, are based where I'm from in the UK as well. And we have all sorts of, of problems with uh, the energy, you know, utilities <laughs> and energy consumption and whatnot. So I'm sure a product like that would be 
more than welcomed over here as well. Um, okay, great. So what's next? Any Anything exciting that you can share with us? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll so on what I can say, at least for the next, um, you know, uh, year and a half, one of the things that we're really doing is, uh, well, the company is growing. We're trying to, um, we've, we've just raised a round of financing to enable us to expand across our current Fortune 500 companies um, that are customers. And so we're growing, we're hiring, um, for the, especially for those critical roles that are yeah, interfacing true. with our customers. Um, the other things that we're working on, I think, that are, you know, more to my uh, things that are closer to me are, are, are the technology capabilities that we're adding. So we're adding AI based control capabilities into HVAC systems so that we can automate the buildings. So it's not just about giving a report and giving you information. We're trying to take control of the things that might be bleeding the most and automate them away, like solve that problem. Yeah, cool. And um, another capability that we're working on now with some of our partners is, at, at least in North America, interfacing that unique self driving building capability back into the grid in an automatic fashion so that the grid can also then pilot some of the buildings that we have so that uh, if you know for example in California energy becomes really dirty at around five or six when the sun starts to set okay and what the grid can do is give us a signal saying hey no we want to extend that well so our buildings the buildings that are controlled by Vertigris's AI network could then theoretically recharge or charge up the chill water in the buildings pre pre-store energy and then um, extend the life of that renewable energy out until 6 7 8 p.m wow so that's kind of something that we're excited about that's like realizing the vision of decarbonizing the grid and 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 transforming um you know, nice. the carbon yeah and what, what sort of time scales have you got on those um uh, we're working on it as fast as we can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah hopefully in the next two three years we'll start to see some of this stuff pick up yeah, that would be nice. Um, OK, Mark, so lastly, then um, a big question to finish. The climate climate crisis in general, you know, uh, what are, are we doing enough as a collective? Um, what part can businesses play in a sustainable future? What more can we be doing? Oh, this is a really big question, Lee. I think, um, you know, the for, for me personally, climate is kind of one of the ex existential problems of humanity, um, and there really is uh, no shelter from it. Like it's it's an inescapable problem facing all of humanity. I genuinely believe that it is also not something that there's a single bullet or a, a, like a panacea that can just magically wipe it away. It is going to require innovation across a variety of different areas from direct carbon capture, energy storage, solar and renewable energy, you know, nuclear fusion, um, um, work on on um, recycling and yeah. uh, even stuff like us, what we do with energy, um, electricity, energy inf um, efficiency. And I think what I would encourage companies to do is, uh, which I think is happening, is really lean into some of the regulatory um, changes that are coming about carbon disclosure about creating and, and incentivizing a carbon market, uh, about making sure that we're denominating not just on dollars, because dollars masks the actual impact of CO2. But if we can turn CO2 into dollars or you know somehow tie that, we can create all these incentives and, and enable like the world to transform more towards um, a carbon neutral world. So that's that's kind of my dream. I think everybody should be doing something towards that. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? And I think more, more and more people now are starting to see this as a, a problem which is front and center. Um, yeah. You know, just from a consumer individual point of view as well, I think it, it, it relies on everyone, doesn't it? It absolutely does, it absolutely does. Mark, well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, Thank you. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Really nice to, uh, to learn more about your business. Um, Mark Chung, co-founder and CEO of Vertigris. Mark, thanks Thank again. You. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show.